Hey everybody, welcome to Tinnitus TV. Today I'm talking to Theo Ogundipwe. He's an actor in London. He does a lot of Shakespeare. And if you're a fan of Top Boy on Netflix, you might recall him from his appearance in season three as the character Reuben. That's not really why I'm talking to him today though. We're speaking because in addition to acting, he's also a musician and a producer. And he just released an EP titled Reworks, which as the title kind of tells you, finds him reinterpreting some classic songs by folks like Jay Dilla. I featured one of his songs on the site recently and we connected up on social media and thought, well, you know, why don't we uh, explore this a little more? So one day recently he called in uh, from his home in London after he had just finished a driving lesson of all things. And we had a nice long chat about music and acting and Shakespeare and his mom and all kinds of stuff. Um, one correction I should make, though, is that when I spoke to him, I said that season three of Top Boy was not on Netflix, which is actually not true. I just couldn't find it because Netflix has broken up the seasons with different titles. So I was wrong about that. And uh, you can go and find it yourself and watch after you check out this interview. Enjoy. So, uh, so tell me, what came first for you, music or acting? Well, to be honest, I have to say they kind of came simultaneously. I say that because I was always interested in performing arts in general. So that's acting, singing and dancing, obviously. And I was deeply inspired by uh, actors as well as musicians from a very early age. And, uh, and also musicals. My mother loved musicals growing up. So she, you know, would play most of them for me. American in Paris, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, My Fair Lady, some of the, the classics. And with that, I came to uh, learn the immense skill of those, um, the huge figures in that world, the, you know, uh, you know um, Fred Astaire's, you know. And so it became, a, a, at an early age, a goal of mine to be disciplined equally and to, to be, have a skill set equally so music and acting came simultaneously but what I will say is I did enter the business first as an actor so I, I went to a very famous performing arts school as a young person at 16 for college for my college years the Brit school uh, famous for you know Amy Winehouse I believe went there and uh, Adele and Jesse J and and I did musical theatre so I studied dance singing and acting and all the disciplines within dance from jazz to tap to to ballet and then I went straight to drama school after that and focused on studying the craft of acting and uh, uh, left drama school and was in the world of acting but whilst that was happening I was making music all the while you know I felt that if I was honing my craft as a musician as a songwriter while I was uh, working as an actor when the time was right, then I could also try and not transition, but I could add that other element into, right. I guess, how I, uh, the material I put out into the world. So the, the idea is to be ambidextrously doing both. Right, right. But the music you're making is, is very different from, from what you grew up listening to. This is not, uh, you know, you are not covering uh, New York, New York or anything, you know. <laughs> Start spreading the news. I wonder yeah. though, that if, there's a, a, an interesting uh, it's a soul interpretation I could make from, from your from <laughs> I, Yeah, no, you're 100% right. I, to be honest with you, my eclectic, my taste or my uh, music listening growing up was very eclectic. So I was raised on a lot of soul. I was raised on a lot of gospel. My mother loved jazz and, and, and soul. I was raised on a lot of reggae. I was raised on a lot of indie music, you know, a lot of 90s indie, a lot of blur, a lot of oasis, verve. Um, and uh, a lot of lovers rock, a lot of hip hop, you know? So I'll be honest with you, I, I, when people ask me what my style is or what genre of music I make, I don't know what to tell them, you know? I've got some EPs that are, uh, well, one finished and another one I'm working on. And I, I, it's very difficult to describe, you know? Cause- Okay, well, we look forward to that, but, but yeah. like we, what we've got right now is, is these three sort of soulful, reinterpretations right of, of, yes, of you know are you adding your piece onto the these other artists puzzle tell me about uh how you put this together and where the idea came from and you know the whole story of, of this ep well this ep came about because i was making music i learned 
to produce. I taught myself to produce all the while while I've been acting in theatre. So I was kind of on the side learning to produce music online. And uh, mainly because pro producers can take a while <laughs> when working with them. And also to, to have the opportunity to, to have more understanding uh, from, from the early stages of creating, not just as a writer, but as, as a music creator. And I was getting to the point where I was starting to build a body of work, the EP that I was referring to, that, that I'll be releasing uh, at some point, possibly next year. Um, so when I was getting to the stage of feeling like it's, it's, it's getting towards completion, I felt like what would be a wonderful thing as a new artist, as an emerging artist, would be to create another project to kind of introduce myself to the world. Um, but also to test my ability in not just creating music from scratch as I've been learning to do, but in, in, in reinterpreting music that I love and I really valued. And some of the music and some of the beat styles and creations that inspired me to produce in the first place. So I chose three tracks that I absolutely adored from a production standpoint and from a songwriting standpoint and challenged myself to be honest to to reimagine and reinterpret for myself and in my own way what what my version of those songs would be or what my version of a song inside those pieces of those incredible pieces of music would be and I chose Freddie Wickham's Waves which is an out just an awesome an awesome piece of music and, and I, I I'm almost reticent to call it a beat it's almost a, it, it's a, mm -hmm. a composition a, a masterpiece I chose Come Through and Chill by the artist Miguel, which is produced by Salam Remy. Salam Remy is a producer I've admired for a long time, from his early work with, with Nas to, to, to his work with Amy Winehouse. Absolutely outstanding producer, so understated, so humble, so graceful, but, uh, but uh, a true genius of our time. And I chose uh, Flowers by the one and only Jay Diller. Mm -hmm. Is there something they all have in common, you think, that, that makes them, you know, fit together for this? I think so, you know. I, no one's asked me that question before. It's an amazing question. And I think, it, I think they do. I don't think I thought of it when choosing them. I think what I thought was, these are pieces that I think are absolutely incredible. And let's, let me challenge myself with, with people who I, I deem to be the greats. But as I was making it, as I was recording the project, I realized that there is a similarity between them. And I think it's timing, you know, understanding that there's a whole world between transients, that there's a whole universe between beats and uh, that you can swing in amazing and original ways between beats. I mm -hmm. think that's what unifies them, their, their swing and their understanding of timing and the universes they can build um sometimes simply and sometimes with incredibly com incredible complexity between beats so was it was it a difficult uh endeavor to sort of i mean you're talking about artists and songs and music that you really love and respect and and it can be it can make you kind of hesitant in terms of what you want to do then and you know you you don't want to go too far you don't want to disrespect the the thing that's yes. already there how yes. do you walk that line between um adding something to it without taking something away from it in the long run you know that's a really really that's a really really great question not only great question but also a great point and i hope i haven't done that <laughs> but, <laughs> don't think so but <laughs> but um you know i would like to think that having an incredible amount of respect and honor for the piece is the best place to start. Um, and I just truly honored those pieces as I was writing to them. I, I took my time with them. It wasn't just something I was gonna just make and fling out. Whilst I say it was something I wanted to introduce to the world, uh, I, 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 but part of the reason of creating it was for something to introduce to the world. It was something that was very important to me because those producers are important to me because those pieces are important to me. And I deeply honored them. And I felt that they were good representations of me and what I love about music and why I even make it, you know? 
so it, it creating with through on <laughs> um beside them as pieces was was a labor of honor for me mm -hmm. and i think that's hopefully what comes across in in the interpretations that i've made what was the what was the actual process of it like um i mean were you sort of listening to one track a hundred times and then gradually you know putting together what you would do or was it something where you've already got this track you know up here in your dna and and you could just write as if you already were you know adding to a canvas that had that was half painted was it was it like a long process or simple i'm just curious of of you know how you physically and actually did it yeah um it's a mixture of both it's an, it's an amalgamation of both of those. And um, I lived with them for a long time because I loved them as pieces. And as I said, they inspired me to even begin to create music, especially produce, you know. Our, they inspired me to, to not only learn to produce and continue learning to produce, which I am till this day, I don't think that will ever stop, but they inspired me to... to uh, I guess delve into the mind of the producers. They inspired me to deconstruct uh, pieces of of music and beats in in order to understand what I love about them. So so there was that. It was in my DNA for that reason. But then when I decided to to create pieces of music with them, then I listened to them quite a lot. Um, I listened to them quite a lot to try and hear the spaces between spaces. I listened to them quite a lot to try and listen to them with fresh ears not just as a as a lover of those pieces of music and those songs but as um blank canvases as you referred to earlier so i it was a mixture of both and mm. um, they're now pieces of music that i don't know not only pieces of music that i love but i think i actually what you said parts of my dna now actually right. mm. so in terms of of also, you know, being being an actor, do you mm -hmm. bring that to the musical uh, the side of, of what you're doing? Or is it more about um, avoiding that and, and just, you know, channeling you as opposed to a character? I've got to tell you, thank you so much for these phenomenal questions. These questions are amazing. Thanks. Um, <laughs> no, no. I'm going to keep you interested. I really appreciate <laughs> you. No, I really appreciate you. It means a lot um that's an amazing question what i mean i'll ask i guess i'll yeah I'll probably answer that in a roundabout way as i do everything but i often get asked um what do you prefer acting or music or you know and not that that's what you just asked but what i always try and explain is that they're two um mediums that draw from the same place um so i guess like create a creative uh, well is what's inside and the, the two mediums or two disciplines, I should say, uh, have access to that world differently. So that's why I need them both. And that's why I need uh, uh, things get added to it, you know. And to answer your question, I guess acting is inside the music in, in regards to writing, because actors love good writing. And that inspires me every time I write to, to continue to create worlds, hopefully, imaginatively, uh, for the listener, but also for myself. And then the acting really comes into frame, hopefully with the writing, when it's time to make music videos and, and create visuals. Um, and that's, that's when they start becoming, uh, looking for a wonderful word to use, but that's when they start to, to, to connect is when it's time to, to make visuals. But I'm always thinking in my mind, especially when I'm writing, what, what the visual could be like, not in order to create the song, of course, but just, uh, you know, how I could visually tell that story. And um, yeah, so both, both of those disciplines uh, live inside simultaneously and kind of uh, emerge when they're useful, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, I would imagine as a lyricist, when you're writing, uh, again, as you as you said, like acting, you're still drawing on on your own experiences and emotions, but you might not be writing necessarily about, 
something that's happened to you specifically. You might be writing in character, so to speak, but it still ends up being your, you know, your emotions and your thoughts and your words, but in a more universal setting, which is really kind of, you know, the basis of a lot of art. So yes, it's sir. again, it's, it's there's a cross um, mingling there. Uh, you, you've done a lot of Shakespeare, I see. I have. I have is this. that good training to uh, to do to to rap and to do to hit, to do things like that? Because, I mean, Shakespeare's got its own rhythm. It's got its own mm -hmm. flow. You have to do a lot of memorization. Um, you know, it's got a cadence. Some of it comes along at a fast clip. This would seem these would seem to be great learning skills for somebody who wants to go and rhyme over beats. 100%. And you know what's interesting? I never thought about that in the early stages of my career as an actor. I never thought about how much that was going to inform my writing and inform my rapping. I never thought about it. And it was like, I think maybe five, six, seven years in, you know, and maybe four plays at the RSC in. I was like, this this vocal training is absolutely like, it's exceptional. And also, Shakespeare was writing some bars. <laughs> Shakespeare was barring his, <laughs> he was barring, like, I mean, he's an exceptional lyricist. I think we all agree on that. I don't think I've said anything too um, revolutionary there. But when you study Shakespeare with some of the greatest minds that have ever, you know, um, untangled his work, Cicely Berry, John Barton, you know, when you're working with some of the greatest directors that have ever touched his work, you know, Gregory Doran, um, I, you start to really realize the levels that Shakespeare was actually writing on, the levels of wordplay, the levels of um, entendre, of metaphor, of simile. And, you, uh, and obviously these are skill sets that you, will interest you as a writer, but you start to realize the levels when, when, when dealing with him in particular and dealing with people who understand his work to a degree in particular. And I think I gained immense an immense um, amount of uh, understanding of writing from studying his work while playing it at the Royal Shakespeare Company. But I also feel exactly what you said. I've, I've gained an immense amount from uh, working vocally every day, articulation, you know, diction, projection, all of these key buzzwords that are attributed to stage actors. Um, I think I've learned a phenomenal amount of breath control from 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 playing Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I would believe it. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier that you've got a lot of stuff uh, sort of in the pipeline, other styles, other sounds. Can you can you uh, expand a, a little bit on, on that? I mean, because it's people who are listening to this EP will sort of think they've got you pegged. Yes, sir. but from what you're saying, that that doesn't sound like it's the case. Um, I, I'm happy. I, I mean. I, it's really interesting, actually, that 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 point. A part of me would like people to think that he got me pegged, um, <laughs> because I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it. I would like to think that people feel like they know me a little bit, at least from mm -hmm. that piece of music, because that's what it was for. It was, hi, you know, it was hello. These are what these these are some of the things I think. This is who I am. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah. So I'd like to think that they got me pegged a little bit, but in regards to, but you want to then? The, I think it sounds to me yeah. like your intent is then to surprise people the next time out with something that they go, wait, this is not. Is there another Theo out there? Because you know, it sounds nothing like what we just heard. You've caught me. I think. <laughs> I think. I think again, there'll be a bit of both. There'll be mm -hmm. definitely some of that. There'll be some, wow, that's that's interesting. That's new, that's fresh. That's not something that what I've heard on reworks. But there'll also be moments of, of, of um, soulful reminders of the fact that I'm into soul and R&B. And there'll also be some uh, great uh, rap and bar reminders that I like to rap, you know? But uh, there will definitely be some interesting twists and turns, some genre, genre bending. I'm really into that. Not for the sake of it, but uh, more for um, just for the fact that I'm full of so many different styles of music and I love so many different styles of music that it just comes out, especially when I'm producing, it just comes out, you know? Most so, importantly, what, what does your mom think of it? 
Most importantly, my mother loves it. She, loves, <laughs> well, she absolutely go. loves reworks. And um, she's had the, an opportunity to hear some pieces of music uh, yet to be released and loves that too. But That's thank good. you for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we don't have season three of Top Boy here in North America yet. Oh, so okay. I have no idea how you come into play, what you do. Wow, is there okay? Is there anything you can sort of for people who you know may not know the show or anything? Is it, what can you say to sort of get them interested to to delve into this and 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 go along until you show up? Got you. Well, uh, let's let's really think about this so that I don't spoil it for people. Top Boy is first of all a phenomenal piece a phenomenal piece created by the wonderful Ronan Bennett, the writer and show creator. And it's based on the inner city life in London, uh, the side of life that people don't get to see and the, the written with and about and for the voices that don't get heard uh, and, and written on, uh, for the voices that don't get heard well. So it's about, you know, um, a kind of drug kingpin who's from that area, from the street, from the, a particular environment, from a certain set of circumstances. And it gives you a lovely rounded view though of how he got to where he got to with his partner, what the reasons they, they do what they do are, and most characters, what the reasons they do what they do are. Uh, to answer your question, before you get to my part, you're going to see lots of twists and turns. You're going to see things going wrong naturally in storytelling. That's the case. You're going to see lots going correct, right for the characters, correctly for the characters. You're going to see um, my character pop up and solve some problems. Are you a Is good a, guy or a bad guy? Ah, no. That, <laughs> or, or a little bit of both, maybe. That's difficult. I'm going to go with a little bit of both because all humans are a little bit of both, aren't they? Nobody's yeah, ever completely good. Nobody's ever completely bad. And we're all just victims of our circumstances or possibly just uh, uh, passengers of our circumstances. And right. I think he's definitely one of those. A passenger of his circumstance who comes in and solves a problem in this particular series. All right. Are you, has it opened a lot of doors for you uh, in terms of uh, career-wise, getting people to see you in maybe a light they're not, you know, they weren't seeing you before from Shakespeare, say? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think that screen was an area that I needed to experience a little more because I've done a lot more theater in my career. So my experience was a lot more lopsided. So I just wanted to get, personally, I wanted to get a balance of experience and screen so that I could move ambidextrously ambidextrously or fluidly between the two um and top boy was a phenomenal opportunity to do that because the writing is spectacular the why it's made means so much the voices that we're speaking for mean so much and giving uh reasons for why things happen in the city of london and why people make decisions they make actually means something so it actually was a, a great transition from Shakespeare or theater in general because it, the writing was good and because it meant something. Right. Yeah. So what about what about uh, doing a musical? You could write a musical. I could write a musical. You could get something in the West End there. You could be the, you know, you could break in it's there. So true. It's so <laughs> true. You know what I would love to do? You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to, to make one for screen. Like I'd love to make a musical series for the screen mm -hmm. about like like following artists uh -huh. like following artists so like are, you mean like a documentary or like a fictional documentary maybe yeah, yeah. like 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 follow it, something fictional but something in a documentary style i think you're right maybe we should work together on it okay <laughs> yeah I'll, we'll get right on that. Yeah. <laughs> but like following artists and and on their on their come up if you will on their journey to where they want to be rather than just all the glitz and glamorous side of what it is to be an artist. I would love to make something that showed what, what it's really like to be an artist from the beginning, from the grassroots. You know? well, I, I think, you know, you call up Netflix, they're giving money to everybody. So, you know, you, you might as well Every, get some. Everybody? <laughs> well, Pretty much surely, like. surely I should get, <laughs> get in on that. I love, so, I love so that. Love back that. to reality are there are there any other <laughs> projects that you've got going on that that you'd like to sort of uh let us know about 
Yes, I have been, I've had the pleasure this year of making two absolutely incredible films. Um, one of those films is called Moment of Grace. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal film about uh, a young woman's life. Uh, she's in a difficult space. This, this is me trying not to spoil <laughs> the film. Mm -hmm. So when I'm staggering what I'm saying, that's what that is. So it's about a young woman's journey. She's had a very hard upbringing, a very hard life. Um, she's in a bit of a, dicky, a diff difficult kind of sticky situation. She makes a poor decision. And, and that means that people now are kind of after her and she now needs to turn her life around, but also find freedom from and emancipation from these people. And I'm playing a rather dubious fellow in that. Mm. And um, that's directed by the amazing Keith Farrell. I should say that incredible director, absolutely phenomenal piece. I also had a, a, a very humble, moment in a fantastic film that's um, in post-production at the moment um, by the incredible Jane Gull, phenomenal writer-director, and that's called Love Without Walls, about a, a couple, again, I'm going to do that kind of scary thing where I try not to mm -hmm. say too much, but about a couple who fall on hard times during the COVID uh, pandemic and become homeless and have to just off the strength of their love essentially find their way out and there's a whole myriad of things that they uh, encounter and um, situations they have to conquer and 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 um, yeah it's a really beautiful film harrowing at times but a really sweet film and I, I was incredibly honored to be a part of it with an incredible cast I have to say as well both both films yeah Great. That all sounds great. Um, so is there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to get to, or have we kind of covered what we're, what we're here to do? <laughs> what we're here to do. I was, I was so official. Yeah, we've covered. Um, well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think we, I think we've covered some, some amazing ground and I have to say it's been an, it's a, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, honestly. Same here, and, sir. and your, and your questions have been really humbling. I feel like you really listened to my music and, and were asking questions I felt like you saw into my mind and were asking questions into my <laughs> I brain. can, I can see into your yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I really appreciate, I just wanted to say that, I really appreciate you. And um, yeah, um, uh, it's it's a real honor, I have to say, to be speaking to you and to, to imagine that my music could have reached all the way to North America, you know, and um, oh, well. and for people to to resonate with it. So I just wanted to say that too. Uh, my pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time today. Uh, keep in touch when you've got, you know, something else on the go. You know how to get a hold of me and uh, oh, we'll we'll do this again down the road sometime. That means a lot. I would love to. It'd be a pleasure. All right.